Oh. What's up, game leavers? It's the Jizz, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about the three best champions for each role in this patch 11.15. And I don't know if pro guys have released their video yet, but I thought I'd upload this pretty early on in the patch just so they can go ahead and copy it like they do the rest of our videos. But in terms of these 15 champions we're about to get into, guys, there are certainly some interesting picks in here, so make sure you stay tuned for the whole video to find out which picks these are. And if you want to master any of the champions on this list, right, you know where to go. Gameweep.com, that's right. Guys, we upload up to 20 videos a week. Get that, 20 frames original videos that are made and uploaded by challenger tier players around the world we make them so they're up to date and so they can help you get out of elo hell and climb to the top of the ranks so sign up join thousands of your fellow summoners links in the description and comment section now we're going to start this video guys by talking about the three best top owners you have to play for 11 15 and coming in at number three is the impossible to be 1v1 -er, and this is fiora now for fiora guys this patch hole breaker getting buffed in terms of your own magic resistant armor and your cannon minions and super minions getting more armor and magic resist as well this is giving you so much more pressure in that split push, and because you are the Grand Duelist, it means that when you do take on one champion, or even more enemy champions, you are just in a much stronger position. Also with Fiora, because Gore Drinker, in my opinion anyway, is in such a good position at the moment, this obviously makes you strong, and the combination with Ravenous Hydra is still one of the best in the game, so Fiora comes in at number 3. Now the second best top laner in the game right now, guys, this might be a little left field, but if you haven't seen Mr. Toad, Tom Kench in the top lane, then you have got to check him out, because this amphibian is tearing up the top Lane. And it's all thanks to those 11-14 changes. And one of the big changes, guys, is the fact that your tongue now applies your passive's damage. And not only this, but it's also dealing more damage based on your bonus health, which has seen Time Kenshin's build Frostfire Gauntlet in the top lane. And what this mythic does is it gives you HP right off the bat, but it also gives you health for each major item you have. So your scaling is insane, and your damage is always scaling as well, even though you are building tank. And by the way, guys, last patch, Time Kenshin's win rate increased by over 6%. That is ridiculous. So if there was ever a time to test out Mr. Toad in the top lane. It is right now. Get around it. There is one top lane champion, guys, who is better than them all. And if you want to be like that chick who had the metal legs off Kingsman, it is time to lock in Camille, who is still the nut pick in the top lane. With Divine Sundra, your damage is still nuts, and because of your mobility and survivability in your kit, because of your ultimate, because of your E, Camille is still the standout top laner. Even though nothing really changed this patch, she's still the best, so if she is open in the champ slate, lock her in before the enemy team does. Now, we're going to head to the other solo lane here, guys, and talk about the mid laners you have to play for 11-15. And the first one, if you're not a fan of APMing it every time you play League, then Malzahar is certainly the pick for you. Now, Malzahar did get nerfed a couple of patches ago, but these nerfs, guys, in fact, most of the nerfs recently from the new balance team haven't really been that significant. And the Malzahar nerf certainly weren't significant enough to stop him from being one of the powerhouses in the mid lane. The tick damage you still have with Leandre's Anguish, your ultimate being one of the most powerful and influential in the game, just press R to win. He is so simple yet so effective and is also great into melee champions with a lot of mobility, so you can lock down those Arkalis, those Zeds, those Talons, you see an awful lot in lower elos, so Malzahar comes in at number 3. Now coming in at number 2, if you want to one-shot your opposing mid laner and juke the rest of the team while doing so, then LeBlanc is the pick for you this patch, guys. Now the reason LeBlanc has been so good recently is because of all the buffs she's had this season, but also because Ludens Tempest is now 200 gold cheaper. I mean, it's been that way for a few patches, but this has seen LeBlanc really come into our own. This means that because you're getting to that mythic spike quicker, you have the potential to one-shot people earlier in a game, and this just accelerates that snowballing potential because one kill can turn into 10 really quickly. She's also got amazing setup for a jungler. She's also very hard to kill, so if I'm playing jungler against LeBlanc, I can't really be bothered ganking that lane because of her passive and mobility, so LeBlanc, guys, comes in at number two, a really good all-around pick. Now, the number one champion, even though Aurelia has got nerfed this patch, if you want to inflate your elo, it is time to lock in Aurelia. All right, so your W's AD ratio goes down, and you're going to be reducing less damage but seriously, is this significant enough? Just like I was saying with Malzahar, these nerfs are not significant enough to take Aurelia from being the number one mid laner. And I've said in the last couple of videos, the fact it only takes four stacks now to stack your passive, this is really influential in the mid lane. And even though that dash speed in your queue might be a little slower, the fact that when you get your ultimate leveled up at 6, 11, and 16, you're getting cooldown off your queue. So if you do misplay, if you are new to Aurelia, even if you're not that good at her, there's a lot more compensation there for stuffing up, which is always going to happen regardless of how good you are. And last patch, a bit like Tom Kench guys, Aurelia's win rate went up 5%. Now it might decrease a tiny bit because of these nerfs, but that's it. Just a tiny bit. So Aurelia is the best mid laner you can pick for another patch. Now let's head to the bot lane guys and talk about the three best AD carries. And the first one I want to talk about, this is going to surprise some of you, is Aphelios. Now for Aphelios, he was one of the worst champions for like 13 or 14 patches this season. But with all the recent busts to Aphelios guys throughout this season, it's really just culminated right here in 11.15. I mean, it really did in 
11.13, when Riot gave you extra attack damage and lethality, and also in 11.12, where they buffed your attack damage per level. This means your scaling is even more off the charts, and because you're getting more attack damage earlier in a game, this gives you the power you need to actually get to that late game, where you legit cannot lose. Now, I understand Aphelios is kind of difficult to play, understanding his weapons and what they do, and the combination, the order you want these weapons in, but if you can play him, let me just throw this out at you. In Master and Above, Aphelios has a 52-53% win rate, which is super high for a champion as difficult as Aphelios. So if you can play him, guys, Aphelios is definitely, if not the best AD carry you can pick. But let's say you don't want a champion with all those weapons. Let's say you want to play a champion who queues every half a second. This is Ezreal. And for Ezreal, guys, despite the Divine Sunder and Earth a couple of patches ago, he is still super strong. Once you get your Divine Sunderer, your Mana Mune, your cooldown boots, it is so annoying to play against you. You're very hard to stay on to. You have a heck of a lot of mobility. Your damage is off chops. And it's really annoying playing against Ezreal in lane and just losing half of your HP to one Q. It's not the most interactive gameplay, so Ezreal comes in as the second best AD carry for 11.15, only to be beaten by League of Legends' own Guy Fawkes. And this is Ziggs. And one of the main reasons, guys, Ziggs is so good in the bot lane. Okay, the Leandris Anguish being 200 gold cheaper, this really helps. And the recent buffs to Ziggs as well. You know, your ultimate flying at a quicker speed to medium to long range. But the big reason that I put Ziggs as number one is because of your synergy with popular supports at the moment. So Karma and Lulu, you have insane pushing power. And what this allows you to do is use your W on towers. So pretty much in every game, well, not every game, but most games, you're going to be getting first tower in the bot lane and access to all of that gold. And for AD carries as well in the early game, who, you know, aren't really that strong because they don't have a lot of items, Zix is pretty good right off the bat. So in terms of poke and harass and actually fighting enemy champions in the bot lane, Zix is one of the strongest AD carries you can pick. And to be honest, the strongest AD carry, well, AP carry overall in the bot lane. So make sure you pick him up this patch. Now we'll stay in the bot lane, guys, for this next one and talk about the best supports. Now, if you want to support who's going to roam around the map and carry, it has to be Bard. Whether you decide to go with Shirelia's Battle Song for the ability haste mythic passive and the movement speed, or Locket of the Iron Solari to protect your AD carry and teammates, Bard is just one of the best 1v9 supports in the game. Your portal gives you so much roaming potential, your ultimate allows you to set up kills and then land your Q, and he's also kind of scary to play against in lane, especially if you're an AD carry or just any squishy champion, because if one Q lands, if the enemy jungler is there, it can be GG, so Bard comes in at number 3. Now coming in at number 2 is the ultimate crowd control artist, and this is Leona. And don't get me wrong, Leona can still roam around the map, but for Leona guys in lane, one of the scariest supports just because of all that crowd control, right? Whether she's flash queuing onto you, ulting onto you, and then eating onto you, you have to be so aware when playing against her because one misstep and you can die. And to be honest, she probably is the best blind pick support at the moment. So if you're thinking about picking a support for 11.15, guys, you really can't go wrong with Leona. Now the two best supports, I'll put these two together here and you'll understand why in a second. So if you want to die 20 times a game, but top the damage charts, you guys have to pick either Zyra or Brand. And it's quite simple, right? All you have to do on these two champions is press R to win. Maybe on Zyra, you have to press your W. But it's a bit like playing Malzahar just in the support role. You really don't have to do that much to affect a game in a positive manner. And these two have some of the highest win rates at the moment, despite not being, well, really support. And in lower elos as well, where range, you know, really doesn't exist, you can have an absolute field down on these two supports, guys. So Zyra and Brand come in as the number one supports for 11.15. Now, the last role we have to talk about, guys, for 11.15 is in the jungle, of course. And coming in at number three, are there any farmers out there? Well, if there are, you guys will be happy to know the Fiddlesticks is still, for another patch, one of the best junglers in the game. No Nurse, Hextech Rockabelt, Sorcerer's Shoes, a full clear before Scuttle Crab spawns, what more do you want? Now, you do have to be a little bit careful of getting invaded in the early game, so make sure you cover your with wards, but in terms of the rest of the game, what is there not to like? The Crow Storm as well, especially in lower levels of play, is going to have a massive impact on a game, and as Fiddlesticks, even if you are behind because you have so much power in your kit, you can always turn a game around and high carry, so Fit comes in at number three. Now coming in at number two, guys, is Lee Sin, and can someone tell me why Lee Sin blind bonds himself? Like, he's already blind, right? Like, it's a bit over the top. But yes, Lee Sin, guys, a bit like Fiora, to be honest, with Gore Drinker. You still do a ridiculous amount of damage, but what Gore Drinker is giving you is ability hates in its passive, but also HP, right? So not not only do you have that sustain from its stats, but also the active, you also have the damage to still one-shot people. With Conqueror 2, it's just so easy to stack, so your healing is just insane. And Lee is just one of the best all-around junglers. And think about those mid laners I talked about. I talked about LeBlanc and Malzahar. And most mages in the game, guys, are pretty strong at the moment. Even the new ones, like Cassiopeia, who's been buffed, Syndra, who's been buffed. These are the scariest mid and jungle duos out there. Like, if LeBlanc lands her chain and Lee Sin is there, that's it. Easy kill, and the game ends. So Lee Sin comes in at number two. Now, the best jungler, guys, for 11 14 
14. If you want to play the bloke with a spear, it has to be Xin Zhao. And despite getting nerfed, you know, his W at later ranks, did this really change anything? No, because with Gore Drinker in the late game anyway, your W is still going to be on like a 3-4 second cooldown, and Xin Zhao is just Lee Sin, but just on steroids. And I'm sure you don't need me to go into detail here with Xin Zhao. You've probably seen him a million times already in the last few patches. But land 1W, you can E across the map, your ultimate blocking damage for a significant amount of time. He's very forgiving to play at the moment, which I guess makes him broken. His DPS is up there with the best of them. So Xin Zhao, guys, comes in as the best jungler to pick for 11-15. And that was the video. Those were the three best champions to play for each role. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think of the selections. And until tomorrow's video, make sure to hit the sub button and to check out the website on your way out, gameweek.com. This has been the Jizz. Bye.